Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to episode 12 of Living Well. I'm so excited about our show today. It is also Global Forgiveness Day, which is just a beautiful day in so many ways. I released a song today. We'll get to that a little bit later as well, but it's just a good day. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining us again today. Um, let's get right to our first guest. I'm excited about this one. Our next guest is an American country music singer songwriter, initially gaining major recognition in 2017 with her self penned Every Little Thing from Satellite Radio. The song helped her secure a major label record deal with Big Machine and eventually got her her first number one song. She just recently released her second studio self titled album and just last week got her second number one with I Hope You're Happy Now, her duet with Lee Bryce. She is a dear friend of mine and I'm so happy to have her on Living Well. Please welcome Carly Pierce. Carly Pierce, hi! Hello! How are you? It's so good to see you. I miss you. I just want to hug you through the screen. Oh my gosh, I know. I miss you too. Um, it's fun though to get to see your face. It is so fun to get to see your face. Um, I'm so excited to have you on Living Well. From the moment I started this show, I was like, I need to ask Carly if she would like to come on. So thank you so much for coming on today. My gosh, I literally was like about to ask. It was getting to the point where I was like, I'm just going to ask her if I can do it. <laughs> well, I know like in quarantine, we've all been pretty busy. Like I know we're at home, but it's been weirdly busy. I mean, we've been, I know we both have been writing a lot. We've been on like so many lives and all this stuff. And I know with everything about Hope You're Happy Now, which we'll get to in a minute, has been just so exciting and crazy and amazing for you. So I just wanted to give you some space. But then eventually I was just like, all right, girl, we got to get you on here. <laughs> I love it. I'm so happy to be here. Okay. So I kind of want to go way back to the beginning first. Okay. And um, I know a lot of people on watching right now are huge fans of you and they may even know the answers to all of these questions. But if they aren't, I want to know where Pierce comes from. Oh, I, I never get to answer this question. Pierce is actually, a lot of people know like the um, red feather that, or the feather that's in all of my logo and everything. And it's the tattoo that I have on my arm. Um, yeah. It is for my grandpa and his last name was Pierce and it's my mom's maiden name and I was so close to my grandparents and just lost them early in life and always they were the two people that really, my grandma, my grandpa, they wanted to see this country music dream happen for me. I'm sure you have people back home like that in your family that just, that was like their goal was to see that like their wish of their life and they didn't get to see it but I said that I wanted to take them along with me and I was not born with a great last name so I was like you know what I'm gonna take Pierce and it's kind of like my little ode to them I love that that's so sweet I never even knew that about you um that's so sweet okay now after winning country crossroads you talk to your parents and we're like let's move to Tennessee and I, after doing research, you dropped out of high school when you were 16. So I, I did. don't know as like, cause I remember having the conversation telling my parents I wanted to drop out of college and it was a very difficult conversation. So I want to know how that conversation went with your parents. Well, my dad is a businessman, so he believes in getting your education and I went to them and I, I had seen that Dollywood was having auditions for their country shows. And I was like, it would be so fun to get to sing at Dollywood instead of being in school. And I liked school and I was like a really good student. So it wasn't like I was trying to run away from it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just went to my parents and I was like, hey, I found this homeschooling program that you guys don't have to teach me in, but it'll get me into any university that I want to get into. And I want to move to Pigeon Forge and sing at Dollywood. And my dad was like, what? <laughs> it's going to be a great idea. Just let me go audition. And I couldn't believe it, but they always tell me that the fact that I researched the homeschooling program and found one made them believe that. And, and I'd just never been the kid that ran away from school. And so they let me do it. But I think about that now and I'm just like, y'all were crazy to let me, but I did graduate from high school. Yeah, but they knew how much of a hard worker you were clearly. And the fact that you went and sought 
out a homeschooling program yourself and you're like, all right, I have it all worked out, mom and dad, here you go. That is so amazing. It was, that's like one of the crazier, I feel like moments in my life of just like, wow, okay. Just that fearless thing that you have as a kid where you're just like, well, yeah, I want to do it and I'm just going to do it. Like, I wish I still had some of that. Uh, I wish I had more of that in me now. Um, just that fearless thing. Hey girl, we can tap into that little girl. I'll tell you right now, I'm, I'm going through the work to tap into that little girl right now too, but it is inside of you. <laughs> you know that I know all about that work. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so you were performing five times a week when you were 16, at least once at Dollywood. Um, what were those shows like? Like, what kind of shows were you doing? What was it like to have a job at 16 like that? So it was actually, get ready for this, it was five shows a day. I'm sorry, Wait. six shows a day, five days a week. What? It was, it was a show called Country Crossroads and we did six shows a day, five days a week. And for me, that was a lot, um, but it really did teach me. I mean, I went into the park every day and it's like Dolly music playing everywhere. For the first time, I really felt understood as a person because I was around all these different people that loved music. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh yeah, this is great. But I was the youngest by five years. And when you're 16, like 16 to 21, that's a huge gap. And mm -hmm. I was kind of scared and, um, but I really feel like it pushed me and it showed me work ethic and it showed me, you know, sometimes we have flown across the country and maybe are super tired and land just in time to make it to the show. And, but the show, those people, whoever is in the audience, like that is their first time probably seeing you or they paid money to come and see this. And so you have to, you just have to put your best foot forward. Yes. Well, and I know my journey coming to Nashville and, and trying to meet people and trying to get record deals, like it's just such a twisted thing. And if you need to go back and repeat the same story, it's like, I couldn't repeat it if, if somebody paid me a million dollars. But I want you to talk about being offered a development deal and a little bit of the journey that you had to go through of like, where you have these major labels promise you so many things and it's so exciting and you feel like the world, cause I've been there sister, uh, the world's like being offered to you. And then for whatever reason, that opportunity doesn't work out. And then you're like, okay, now what do I do? And you still have to continue to figure out how to, how to move on. Talk about like that, part of your journey when you were in Nashville? I moved to Nashville in January of 2009. And by 2011, I had a record deal and I was like, great, awesome. Everybody in Nashville loved me. Everybody wanted to write with me. Everybody wanted to play me songs. It was like, blah, 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 great. And my A&R person got fired at the label. And so I never got to cut music. I had my dream producer, like my dream, cause I loved the, the 90s and early 2000s country, um, Dixie Chicks and Sarah Evans and all that. And Paul Worley was gonna produce me. So I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And I literally watched Nashville, I got dropped and I watched Nashville completely turn their face to me. And I couldn't get a right to save my life. I got dropped from my publishing deal. Um, I got, just had people offer me deals and we would talk money and then I would just never, literally they just ghosted me. So I started cleaning Airbnbs and then became a backup singer for Lucy Hale, Pretty Little Liar Star, and just like took out a loan on my own to make music, which ultimately led me to meeting Busby, um, who was my producer on my first two records. And he signed me to a developmental deal in 2015 um, and to a publishing deal. And he was like, look, um, I know that, and, and this other guy, Daniel Lee, who is, uh, was his partner and I still work with Daniel to this day. And they were just like, we know that female artists aren't working. And we also know that everybody, like I'd been passed on by like everybody in Nashville times like three, like they told me to move home, like get out of here. Like you were made for the nineties. I was like, but I love country music. Um, and they were like, we know that you've been passed on, but we believe in you. And ultimately that was, that was the moment that everything shifted for me. Cause I truly found somebody who believed in what I was doing, regardless of what the town told them. But then, you know, I went around and played my music for people that Busby and I recorded. Every little thing was in that bunch. And I had people still be like, this music is just not special. 
And then Sirius XM, the highway, J.R. Schumann, he, he thought every little thing was a game changer. And he was like, I'm putting this on the air. Like it's going to happen. And I remember just being like, you can't put that song on the air. Like I wrote that song, like just for myself. Like it's my artistic song that I wrote for myself about a breakup. And he was like, this song is going to change your life. And literally like overnight, I can't tell you how many people, and I always say this because big machine, I never met with them. And, um, that's my label now, but everybody else like managers, labels, they came right back on the same music and they were like, wait a minute. Cause it started out selling like all the signed songs on iTunes. So there you go. Girl. I mean, talk about being a warrior. Talk about, I know what it feels like to have be the cool kid and then you're not the cool kid in town and you have to figure out ways to just keep going to the standpoint where you can paint the picture where you are the cool kid again, which is so weird. It's such a weird spot to be in. Like, how did it feel to now have the ball in your court? You know, at this point, yes, you signed a development deal with Busby, but you you weren't working with, with a label and to have all the labels calling you, like, did that feel good? I feel like my life, and it continues to do this, like, no matter what hardship I go through, it seems to always be something that is connecting a dot for me to get somewhere else. So I feel like I had to go through all of those things in order to get to a place where I was actually in a way better scenario. I signed a record deal and was pushed out within the next month because I had a song that was working versus thinking that I wanted a label deal for all those years to then what, just sit there for a few years while I figured out what I was going to put out. Like I really did get to get a better record deal. I really did get to have a team that admired everything I'd built on my own. And I ultimately got to come to a record label with something that they wanted, which I never thought that was going to happen. And sometimes you just don't know what, what you're being prepared for. You don't know why something's happening the way that it is, but it always reveals itself. And now I'm like so grateful that none of those record deals or none of those opportunities worked until this time because I wasn't ready until then. Absolutely. Well, I am just so proud of you. Um, I hope you're happy now. Just went number one, your second number one. Um, congratulations, by the way. Still like, wait, oh my God, it really did do it. Thank you. It did do it. And it's, it's such a journey to get there, you know, all the time with songs um, on the charts. And I know fans and a lot of people watching don't even care about number positions on charts, but a lot of, you know, our labels and, and industry people do care about it. And so it's a huge feat and it's not something to, to play down at all. Like, I'm just, I'm so proud of you. Now, I want you to talk about how that song came to be a little bit. I mean, you wrote it with Luke. Lee Bryce sings it with you. Tell everybody about the story. Yeah, I played a radio show with Luke Combs years ago. I think he had Hurricane out. Mm -hmm. And I just remember being like, man, this guy's voice is just like, it reminded me of home where I'm from in Kentucky. And I just went up to him. You were at that show. We went on his bus. Oh my gosh, I remember that. Oh my God. Okay. So that night, wow. Yes. We were on his bus and I, right before I left, I said, Hey, I know this is really weird. And I'd never asked another artist to write before. And I was like, I just would really love to write with you. And so we exchanged numbers and he was like, seriously, let's do it. And you know, in your head, you're like, we're never going to do this. Right. <laughs> and up the date, we found a date and I went in and I had just gone through this situation where I felt like I kind of blindsided somebody by telling them I wasn't in love with them anymore and moving on to another relationship um, and thought that I should have, I needed to apologize. And so I started telling him, and I'm just like, you know, sometimes you confuse love for being comfortable. And Luke actually had the idea. He was like, what if we spin and write a duet on the idea? I hope you're happy now. And I was like, oh, I love that. And he's like, I can play a mean guy. I've been this guy before. And we just had this like really honest conversation. And he started kind of playing the groove of I hope you're happy now. And he was like, sing what you feel. And this is the only time this has ever happened to me. But the whole first verse that you hear me sing on the radio on, on the on the track is exactly what came out of me in that moment. Me too. And, it, 
And I just like started laughing and they were like, well, guess you needed to say that. And uh, I just knew that the song was special and we finished it and I knew I wanted to put it out as my next single. I knew it was like an important message that I wanted to get out there and felt like it was really true to me as an artist. And so I literally was like, who's the best male singer in our format? Lee Bryce. And to me, like nobody can sing like Lee Bryce. Mm -hmm. And he has that same kind of voice like Luke, like that just like country big voice. So I just sent it to him and I'm such a fan of his as a, as a songwriter. And I was like, hey, it's Carly Pierce. Do you want to sing this song with me? And he loved it immediately. And he was just like, I love this song. And that's kind of how it happened. Amazing. The way that the world can just collide, the universe can come together. So, so awesome. Now, quarantine has been just a crazy time for everybody on the planet. But, um, but I think specifically <laughs> for us artists, yeah. and you've just been through a lot. Um, how are you? You know... I'm, I'm getting better. I'll say I'm getting better. I will say that I am grateful for quarantine. I'm grateful. You know how fast our lives are. You know how easy it is to kind of tap into who we are as artists and kind of ignore our actual hearts and our actual lives and things like that. And quarantine just, quarantine was good to me. It showed me a lot and I had to make some really big decisions for my own life. And I feel like this is another time in my life where maybe I thought I had it all figured out and it very abruptly switched on me. And I'm left going, well, what does this mean now? What does this mean? Why did this have to happen? Why just, why did this happen to me? But I feel like I'm reverting back to my, my Nashville sense of, of thinking about pre every little thing girl and going, you knew what you had to do. You did it. And now you're left going, what is coming? Cause I know, and I, just in my life, it has proven to me when I do what I know I need to do and I don't give up and I love myself more, I see why. And so I am hopeful and excited for what the next chapter holds for me, if that makes sense. That totally makes sense. I'm so proud of you. And I think that quarantine, at least I know just from my experience, has been like shining a huge bright light on your heart and what you feel. And I'm with you. We are, specifically the two of us, are known for just working. Like we go, 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 go. We've gone six days a week, come home, do laundry, pack a suitcase and leave again. Like yes. two of us last year, we were like high-fiving each other through the airport as we would like be going random places. And I would see pictures of you on red eye flights. And then I'd be picturing myself on a red eye flight. And I'm just like, God bless. We work so much that it's hard for us sometimes to truly like stop and just feel things mm -hmm. and live life and and absorb what the universe is is doing and so for sure for me for quarantine it's it's been like a big learning experience and it's funny you say that because I have been really trying to tap into those little qualities that I had as a little girl that sometimes through life experiences we lose touch from. And I think we can get so much courage and faith and growth from those little girls. And we, if we just remember to like take her hand and, and keep walking forward. And so I just wanna say, I'm proud of you. I love you so much. I'm here for you. And I am so excited with all the incredible things that are to come for, you and your life and the music you are going to make. Um, I just, I love you. I love you. And thank you. Um, the little girl, people can't forget. Before people hurt us and before people knocked us down, we had just so much, we had all the confidence in the world and you have all the innocence in the world and naive and all of that. And you just can't forget her because she was fiery or him or whoever just, yeah. 
it was before the world and life got a hold of you. So. Absolutely. Amen, sister. Well, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to hang with me. Thank you for coming on Living Well. Um, and I cannot wait to see you soon. Oh, I love you so much. Thank you for having me on. Thanks, girl. Bye. I'm so happy we finally had Carly on the show. And what a beautiful day to have her on the show. It is Global Forgiveness Day today, guys. And I, I feel this in so many ways. I released a really important song from my record, Heart Theory. My record is available for pre-order, by the way. It is out August 14th, and I'm so excited about it. I wrote a song about my story as a little girl. And um, there was an article that came out today thanks to People Magazine that talks all about it. If you want to read that article, we'll leave all the links below for you. But I'm excited to finally get to share my story. This has been something that I've wanted to share for a long time. And we thought what better a day than to release the song on Global Forgiveness Day. Global Forgiveness Day is all about yes, forgiving people in your past, but mainly forgiving ourselves. I feel like we're so hard on ourselves most of the time. And if we can find that that humility within ourselves, that that beautiful place being able to forgive ourselves for things that have happened, things that aren't in our control, maybe things that are in our control. It just sets you off in a much better place. Global Forgiveness Day, a day to forgive, a day to be forgiven. It's a chance to set things right. It's a chance to put aside old differences, move beyond grievances and hurts and start fresh. Our world is so full of unresolved conflicts and, and unresolved conflicts in our community, but in ourselves. There's no peace without forgiveness. I truly believe that forgiveness is a huge element of personal health. So let's talk about some things we can all do. Um, we can talk to our friends, we can talk to others, we can write down our feelings, we can journal, we can self-reflect, we can you know, speak to a professional if, if you feel like that would be a good thing for you to do. I feel that even just talking to our friends, different perspectives can really give us a beautiful perspective on our own life, you know? And, and um, we can learn so much from that. I love this quote. We think forgiveness is a weakness, but it's actually the opposite. It takes a very strong person to be able to forgive. Forgiveness, I do believe, is an inner strength. That when you can find that, it like unleashes a newfound confidence within yourself. And honestly, I feel like I wrote this record a lot in that feeling. I'm really excited because with the release of Make You, I've also decided to start my own foundation. I feel like it's a little early in my career to start my own foundation. And at the same time, it feels like the perfect time. It's called the Make You Movement, and I feel like it's just time for me to put my money where my mouth is. And if I'm going to talk about my story and I want to support the things that I believe in, um, I just felt like it was the perfect time to launch a foundation. So you can find the link for that below, and you can check out our mission and throw a couple bucks if, if you can towards it, but I'm so excited about finally having a platform that I can, I can do good and spread the goodness that I feel in my heart and spread the feeling of forgiveness. So check out the Make You Movement and it officially started today. So hooray. <laughs> okay, now time for everybody's favorite few minutes of the week. It's time for the Wellism of the Week. All right, Wellism number one. MIT scientists design an autonomous UV robot that can disinfect the Boston Food Bank in just 30 minutes. The approach uses a custom UVC light fixture designed at CSAIL, which is the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory that is integrated with robotics on its robot base. The results were encouraging enough that researchers say the approach could be useful for autonomous UV disinfection and could one day be used in grocery stores, schools, and restaurants. How incredible is that? That's amazing. 
I'm a little scared of AI, but, um, but all of this is awesome. And if it can help to disinfect our world and our warehouses, I'm all for it. All right, wellism number two. Carolina and Barry Seek, along with their two young daughters, are preparing to move to the tiny island of Seychelles in Africa to launch a charity teamed up with local biologists in a bid to revitalize the coral reefs in the area. The coral has been devastated by rising sea temperatures. In three months, once it is complete, it will be the first large-scale land-based coral farm in the Indian Ocean and the second in the world. These eagle warriors hope to use the facility to grow around 10,000 corals per year, completely renewing the coral reef. That's amazing. I love it. Man, that would be cool to visit one day. A coral reef farm? That's, that's so awesome. Kudos to you, the seeds. All right, our third wellism of the week. I really like this one. Michelle Brenner from Gig Harbor, Washington, lost her job because of the coronavirus pandemic and through grocery shopping realized all the frozen lasagnas at the grocery store were out of stock. She began making pans of lasagna for her friends and family and used her government stimulus check of $1,200 to buy all the ingredients to make 400 dishes of lasagna in the first two weeks. She started doing this. Three months have passed now and Michelle has made over 1,200 pans of lasagna for her neighbors, strangers, essential workers, local police, and fire departments all over her community who have heard about her kindness and generosity. She cooks for eight hours a day and has since raised over $20,000 on Facebook to continue her cooking initiative. Let's give it up for the lasagna lady, Michelle. That's just amazing. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to episode 12 of Living Well. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. We will be back with another episode next week and some, some more new music teases of things to come with the album. Pre-order the album. If you haven't pre-ordered it yet, it's out August 14th. I cannot wait to share this music with you. Today, we released a brand new song. Today, we released a brand new song. It's called Make You, so check it out below. We'll see you guys next week. Thank <laughs> you.